After our first full season with West Ham, we're officially back in European football, heading into the Europa League. With this upgrade, we've got some big changes lined up, especially with a few players returning from loan who might not fit into our plans. A lot of you commented that Kudus wasn't getting his best chances in a central role, so we've made the switch. Kudus is now out on the left, and Paqueta is taking over centrally. This setup should let Kudus really use his speed on the wing, while Paqueta can work his magic in the middle. Thanks to European football, we've got a bigger button budget to play with and yes I've turned on the settings so we don't get sacked by the board but our goals this season will be to hold our ground in the Premier League go all out for the FA Cup and of course aim to win the Europa League now let's get into some transfers Nayef Uggerd has some baggage here at West Ham so when Barcelona came calling it just made sense to let him go he'll be staying in La Liga with us netting 20 million on the deal for Maxwell Cornet, I still think he's a quality Premier League player, probably a squad rotational role, just not for us, so he'll be heading to Crystal Palace for $5 million. And for Kurt Zuma, since we're stacked at center back, we managed to accept a deal for $10 million that saw him leave for Bournemouth. Our first incoming arrival will be Kieran Tierney, who's known for his grit, energy, and dedication on the pitch. Tierney rose through the ranks at Celtic, where he made his senior debut at just 17 years old. His defensive strength combined with his ability to support the attack helped lead Celtic to multiple league titles and cemented his status as a fan favorite. In 2019, Tierney joined Arsenal facing the intense competition of the Premier League, and despite early injuries, his hard work, humility, and fearlessness won over Arsenal fans. Injuries have continued to challenge Tierney, and as such, he's fallen down the ranks at left back for Arsenal. But I believe he can still be a huge player for us here at West Ham, and certainly someone that has Premier League quality. His arrival for 10 million is a fantastic deal. He had his contract expiring at the end of the season, and I believe we can get him back to playing at his best. Our next signing is the inspiration for this episode. Alan Varela's style has drawn frequent comparisons to Argentine legend Javier Mascherano. Mascherano joined Tevez in that 2006 summer transfer that sparked a lot of controversy. But I would say both Varela and Mascherano are known for their grit, tactical intelligence, and the ability to control games from deep midfield. Like Mascherano, Varela reads the game exceptionally well, intercepting plays and initiating attacks with precision. Varela's defensive instincts combined with his passing accuracy and calmness under pressure mirror Mascherano's influence in the heart of Argentina's midfield. For many fans, he's the natural successor and maybe we can help Varela achieve the same status Mascherano had. I think it's only fair that we paid his release clause of 38.5 million. Realistically, he'd go for much more than that in the modern transfer market. With aging goalkeepers at the squad, I was certainly tempted to sign Aaron Ramsdale from relegated Southampton, but Ariola is coming off of a fantastic season. So instead, we're going to sign a player with similar potential, but significantly younger and has room to grow in Gavin Bazunu. The Dublin born goalkeeper started his senior career at just 16 years old for Shamrock Rovers, catching the attention of European clubs with some impressive performances. He joined Manchester City in 2019, going on to be loaned out in the lower tiers of English football. His transfer to Southampton was a bit of a gamble, and I'm not sure he's going to get first team minutes, especially with Ramsdale joining him. If Southampton continue the same form they've been on, I think it's a matter of time before Bazunu leaves, especially with him being Ireland's first choice keeper. We're going to sign him for 15 million, Quite a bit more than his market valuation, but we're going to take the similar strategy that Manchester City did, loaning him out to a team in the championship. And considering the two goalkeeper options at Bournemouth, I think it's a pretty safe bet that he'll get playtime. One last transfer with a Sevilla player that has transferred to Athletic Club Bilbao in this save in Juan Luis Sanchez. He is one of the top prospects right now at Sevilla, thanks in large part to the guidance of current West Ham manager, Yulen Lopetegui. Known for his sharp tackling and relentless pressing, Juan Luis's defensive skills were honed under Lopetegui, who emphasized discipline, positioning, and smart decision-making. Over the years, Juan Lu has transformed from a raw talent into a disciplined, versatile defender and midfielder, and he's now poised to become a standout defensive force in La Liga. It's going to be another 15 million transfer here, showing great potential, 
and this should sort out the right back position for the future. We've got our three youth scouts available and a couple of new countries to set up. We will always keep a scout in England, this time searching for a center attacking mid with the shadow striker role. This is meant to mirror Frank Lampard, who of course started his professional career at West Ham, where he quickly showcased his potential as a skilled midfielder with a powerful shot and keen sense of positioning. Next up, we'll search for a left midfielder from France, who of course mirrors Dimitri Payet, who after joining West Ham in 2015, quickly became a fan favorite with his creativity, flair, and exceptional free kick ability. That 2015-2016 season was a memorable one, but his abrupt departure in 2017 left fans with mixed emotions about his time at the club. Finally, we'll be searching for a right back slash center back in the United States, Jonathan Spector is one of the Americans that have spent some time at West Ham, racking up a good amount of appearances for the club. I'd say he's probably most known for a League Cup match in 2010, where he scored twice against Manchester United, his former club, helping West Ham to a memorable 4-0 victory. We've got a match against Brighton to kick off our Premier League campaign. With all the arrivals and departures, here is what our squad will look like. Our formation stays largely the same, just a few position changes. With the ball, we'll hold the 4-2-3-1 shape, and without the ball, we'll shift to a heavy emphasis on the right side, but still plenty of attacking support with both Kudus and Tierney down the left flanks. It's a 2-1 win to kick off our league campaign. Decent results in August and heading into September, we've got our first Europa League fixture. Atalanta, of course, a formidable opponent. They won the Europa League against Leverkusen last season. I do want to keep you updated on some setting changes that I've made based on the gameplay that I've experienced so far. If you want to replicate it, feel free. Ultimately, this balances things out a little bit more to my play style and will make for hopefully a better experience all around. West Ham had a pretty good season in the Europa League in 23-24, losing in the quarterfinals to Bayer Leverkusen, which is not a bad feat considering the season they had under Xabi Alonso. But hopefully we can start things on a positive note with this new league format. But it's Kudus down the left side, plenty of space and some good skill moves to get by the defenders. Unfortunately, the shot going wide. That might be some of the new gameplay settings coming into play. Hoping we see some more long shots as well as Bowen tries one there. But on a set piece, Todibo has space. He's going to rip one and that one goes off of the crossbar. So first impressions is that I'm really liking these new settings. I try to keep things fairly realistic, but I always love a long shot, and I know you guys will as well, watching these highlights back. Bowen's shot going off the crossbar. We're very unlucky not to score a goal here in the first half, but as we switch forward to the second half, some really good build-up play. Paqueta passing over to Alvarez. We've subbed on Farias, who of course is our Carlos Tevez regen. Good to finally see him get a goal in the gameplay. It's been coming as he's had a great bit of involvement in build up to goals, but here is the finishing piece. With just five minutes remaining, we're going to try to hang on to this result, but Atalanta pushing forward, and this is where one of the new tactical features in FC25 come into play. The CPU is not afraid to get forward and try to score a goal. Some really intelligent play to play the ball across the Lookman who was huge for Atalanta in the Europa League final last season. Ultimately, this one ends level, so we'll share a point. I do want to showcase more of the season in these episodes, so we're going to simulate forward all the way through to the January transfer window. League-wise, we sit 7th place, so stable as we try to qualify for the Europa League once again. We did see an exit in the 4th round of the Carabao Cup to Arsenal, and we are still in the FA Cup as we match up against Colchester. I do have to say some of the bugged settings at the launch of FC 25 have led to some issues in this squad. You can notice fitness is not ideal and we also have an issue with player morale. Mavropanos apparently unhappy despite having a first team role. He submitted a transfer request and Arsenal heard that call to action as they submitted 
a 30 million offer, which we were more or less forced to accept. Honestly, not the most unlikely thing considering Mavropanos is a former Arsenal player and the only reason he left is because of some poor transfer negotiations that included a very small buyout clause for Stuttgart when he was on loan there. Emerson is also going to be leaving the club at the end of the season. We just can't give him the important squad role he's looking for, so it's another transfer to Bournemouth. We do need to find a replacement for Mavropanos and it might be for the best as I've identified a great transfer target with Jakub Kuyor. Although he's listed as a left back for Arsenal, he can certainly play in that left center back role. He started his youth career for local youth teams and later joined Anderlecht's academy, developing into a modern center back. After playing in Slovakia, he eventually transferred to Syria where he caught the interest of Arsenal who signed him to add squad depth and adaptability to their defensive lineup. It is a 15 million deal at the end of the day. It's going to be a few weeks before he makes that center back position change, but you can expect an increase to his rating. As we complete that transfer and finish up the month of January, we've got a look at our Europa League league standings and it's Chelsea that finished top, but we find ourselves in the 12th place spot, which is good enough for the playoffs and our opponent in said playoffs will be Basak Tahir. Probably the top talent there is the former career mode wonder kid, I would say, in Christoph Piontek. It's a 1-1 draw in the opening leg, but the second leg at home sees a 2-1 victory for us. It's Suchek and Paqueta with the go-ahead goals that see us through to the round of 16 against Lazio. Former Arsenal man Matteo Gendozi over here at an 82 overall. And Lazio were the winners in the opening fixture, but we see a strong resurgence in the second leg, putting us through 4-3 on aggregate into the quarterfinals against Sparta Praha. This is a really favorable matchup. Not a whole lot of high potential players at this club anymore, but Adam Kurbeck used to be that. He's since dropped a little bit in his potential, and I think results-wise, you guys might expect. We were the winners in the first leg and winners in the second leg putting us through to the semi-final 6-3 on aggregate, another really favorable matchup with Club Bruges. One of the perks of me focusing on this series in a little bit more detail than the realistic rebuilds is that I'm able to catch things like this. Club Bruges have an 18-year-old Nigerian center defensive mid named Prince David. I don't think this is a regen of any player, and I'm not used to the computer having these high potential ETH Academy products. Maybe this is a new feature in FC25. I'd really appreciate you guys letting me know in the comments because I think this could genuinely be a new transfer target for us. Anyways, we do win the opening fixture 2 0, courtesy of goals from Farias and Ward Prowse. The second leg ends 1 1, so that means we're into a Europa League final. A final will come against Real Sociedad. Premier League wise, there's no chance we can make the push up to the Champions League. So a big focus will be placed on this Europa League final. We've also got a few players retiring at the end of the season. And two that I would consider to be club legend status with Lucas Fabianski and Michael Antonio. Anyways, here is the Sociedad lineup. They've got a strong squad with some high potential players. Again, these bug settings in FC25 are starting to annoy me because stamina is a huge issue for us for this final. I'm not here to make excuses though. We just need to bring the best ability that we can and hope that we can see out this Europa League campaign with a victory and find West Ham and the Champions League next season. It's going to be Kubo who starts things off. Todibo with the interception but right away, we are going to see an issue with the stamina. We're trying to play out of the back and we're going to see an injury to one of our players. This is Tierney, kind of fitting considering his injury history in the past with Arsenal, that he is the first player to go down. We will go ahead and make a substitution though. This is why we've tried to stack our bench and Emerson in one of his final appearances for the club will need to see things out. It's a great run here from Sadiq as he gets by our defenders, but that effort going off of the post. Sociedad keeping possession though as they play essentially to the edge of the box. Sadiq getting a second chance and he will not make a mess of this one as he gives Sociedad the opener in the 15th minute. We're trying to answer back with a set piece and a little bit of confusion here as Paqueta gets the ball, playing it through to Bowen, back to Paqueta, and now looking for options, finding Alvarez. We're very patient with our build up play. Eventually it's Farias with just an inch of space being played through. And once again, our Carlos Tevez regen finding his form here at West Ham. And I am very excited what the future might look like for him. 
If we had full stamina, I am confident Kudus would have been clean through on goal. Unfortunately, it ended end up being a good save from the Sociedad keeper. But Somerville being brought on in the second half, I'm really sad to see him not getting as many minutes as I think he deserves because he's an amazing player. He's stepped up on multiple occasions. And maybe you guys can help me try to find him getting involved in the squad. But we're very fortunate not to have Sociedad take the lead in regulation as we head into extra time. It's a poor pass that leads to us losing possession and it's a big save from Ariola. This is why I've decided to keep him as our starting goalkeeper. He just does this on such a consistent basis that there was no way I could replace him with someone like Aaron Ramsdale. So in a fitting fashion, we'll go into penalty kicks as both goalkeepers battle it out. Pretty confident in our set piece takers. We've got a lot of strikers in there. I've always backed my abilities in penalty kick shootouts and it's going to be a close one here as full Krug converts as we find things level. I did start to notice that Sociedad were taking a lot of their penalty kicks to the player's right side. So that's the direction I started diving with the goalkeeper. And you guys will start to see that truly did pay off. Two consecutive saves there for Ariola as we have a chance to win it with Somerville, the player who I want to be featuring more often and have more of a role in this West Ham save, gets the winning penalty kick to see us through to the Champions League next season and some silverware for the club. A huge performance from him, probably one worthy of a starting 11 place, depending on any transfer business that happens this summer. But this is a big achievement for West Ham. Of course, they won the Conference League with Declan Rice leading the club. We're now in a new age and we're showing that we can compete to be one of the Premier League and maybe even European giants. That's going to end our season on a high, but we'll cover results across all competitions and discuss plans for season three. Premier League wise, we'll stay in that seventh place spot with Liverpool winning the league and Aston Villa, Manchester City and Chelsea rounding out the top four spots. I'd say mid table looks pretty much as expected with Luton Town, Norwich, and Nottingham Forest seeing relegation to the championship. As for the championship, it looks like Bazuno helped Bournemouth win the league. Leeds will be joining them with automatic promotion and Middlesbrough winning the championship playoffs. It was a fourth round exit for us in the FA Cup with Liverpool picking up the double here with a victory against Crystal Palace in the final. We did lose against Arsenal in the fourth round as well for the Carabao Cup, with them eventually going on to defeat Chelsea in the final. Leipzig were the Champions League winners against Atletico Madrid, and Arsenal were Conference League winners against Marseille. The decision to shift Paqueta to a central role really has paid off. 21 goals and 18 assists is ridiculous. Unfortunately, he won't rank in the top 10 of Premier League goals with Jack Grealish picking up the golden boots but I am very happy with the decision because I was honestly on the fence of letting Paquette go. Grealish had a huge season though. Most Premier League goals and most Premier League assists, it is no doubt that he won the Premier League Player of the Tournament award. And it's finally time where Marmadashvili has taken over for Alisson at Liverpool, leading the Premier League in clean sheets. But Ariola not too far behind the fifth place spot. As far as most valued players, Kudus leads the way. He's now at an 86 rating. I don't know what his future is going to look like at the club. I'm sure some transfer offers will be incoming. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see him stay or whether we should cash in on a huge transfer deal. Some positive loan spells for players like Luis Guillerme, who's up to a 78 overall. Michael Chambers, who is our Declan Rice regen, now at a 69 overall. Bazunu being loaned out has increased his rating to a 78. And we've also got some updates on Youth Academy players. Charlie Whitaker is our Frank Lampard regen. The 62 overall center attacking mid from England has an 88 to 94 potential. Theo Leroy is our Dimitri Payet regen. The French left winger has a 62 overall with 88 to 94 potential. And finally, we've got an interesting result with our American Youth Academy network. Paul Kerr is a 62 overall right midfielder, but he's got great potential with 90 to 94. We didn't achieve most of our board objectives, but I think we've had a very successful season with West Ham. Here is what our team will look like heading into season three. I'm relying on your feedback to what the future of this series will look like. Let me know in the comments what you want to see in future episodes. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new, but until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you all again soon.